Good day once again, students, and welcome to the chemistry class. Adejobi Munini Nola Ajibi Chemistry is my name once again. We are going to be taking uh, a few questions in practical chemistry. In your practical chemistry at Waek and Neko, there are three questions you will be taking. Question one is simply titration or quantitative analysis. Question two is qualitative analysis. That's where you deal with identification of cations and anions. And question three is general chemistry. So the questions we're going to be treating in this lesson or series of lessons are some sample questions in question three and their answers. So the first question I have here is state the difference in the physical properties used to separate mixtures using the following separation techniques. State the difference in the physical properties used to separate mixtures using the following separation techniques. A. Fractional distillation. B. Simple distillation. C. Fractional crystallization. D. Filtration. E. Separation funnel method. Now, for fractional distillation, the physical property used is closeness in the boiling points of the components of the mixture. Simple distillation, physical property used is the wide difference in boiling points of the components of the mixture. For fractional crystallization, the physical property is the difference in the solubility of the substances in solution. And then for filtration, the physical property has to do with difference in the particle size or particle sizes of the components of the mixture. And for separation funnel method, that is actually used to separate two different liquids, the physical property has to do with difference in density of the liquids. Second question, a solid chemical sample T decomposes on heating to give a white residue U and carbon four oxide gas. On addition of water to U, P, which is often used to identify carbon four oxide gas in the laboratory is produced. State the identity of T, U, and P. That question is a very simple one. It says a substance T decomposes on heating to give a white residue U and carbon four oxide gas. Any substance that will liberate carbon four oxide gas when it is heated must either be a trioxocarbonate four or a hydrogen trioxocarbonate 4. But because we have been told that the uh, carbon 4 oxide, the residue rather, is added to water to obtain U, which is used to identify carbon 4 oxide in the laboratory, that automatically tells you that that residue is no other substance but calcium oxide. If you add calcium oxide to carbon four oxide, you get calcium trioxocarbonate four. So T is calcium trioxocarbonate four, U is calcium oxide, and then P that we have been told is used to test for carbon four oxide is no other substance but calcium hydroxide. When calcium hydroxide is dissolved in water, it gives us what we call lime water in chemistry. Quickly, let's take the third question. What is the color of K2Cr2O7? That is potassium hexaoxodichromate 6. And then list five gases that can change its color the answer are as follow the answers are as follows one k2cr2o7 is either orange or yellow in color and uh, five gases that changes its color are number one sulfur four oxide that is so2 gas number two hydrogen sulfide gas that is h2s Number three, alkene. A typical example is ethene, that is uh, C2H4. And number five, alkynes. A typical example is ethene, that is C2H2. I've given you four. Because the question says you should give five, you can give one more example of an alkene and one more example of an alkyne. We'll come back later.
You are welcome back after the short break. So let's take the first question for this segment. It goes thus. Name a suitable device for the following. A. Filling acid into a buret. B. Adding indicator to a solution during titration. C. Storage of silver trioxonitrate 5 solution. D. Production of gas in small or intermittent quantities and e heating copper metal and maybe we should add another one separation of a mixture of liquid paraffin and water for the first one a funnel of appropriate size is used to fill acid into a burette the second one dropping pipette is used to add indicator to a solution during titration number c Amber colored bottle or brown colored bottle is used for the storage of silver trioxonitrate 5 solution. Number four, Kipps apparatus is used for the production of gas or gases in small or intermittent quantities. Number five, Bunsen burner is used to heat a strip of copper metal. And number six, a separating funnel is used to separate a mixture of liquid paraffin and water. So let's go to the next question. How would you dehydrate sugar and ethanol? How would you dehydrate sugar and ethanol? For the two of them, you use the same substance. You simply add concentrated tetraoxosulfate 6 acid. When concentrated tetraoxosulfate 6 acid is added to sugar, a black mass of carbon, charcoal, is obtained. I need to sound a note of warning here. Never try the use of any concentrated acid without the supervision of your teacher. And number two, when ethanol is treated with concentrated tetraoxosulfate 6 acid, ethane gas is produced. Third question, explain why it is required to moisten a strip of litmus paper while testing for the acidity or alkalinity of a gas. Let me take that again. Explain why it is required to moisten a strip of litmus paper while testing for the acidity or alkalinity of a gas. The answer is Water is required to ionize the chemical content of the litmus, whether blue or red, so that the ions present in it can react with the ions present in the acid or base. The next question, why is it required to acidify sample solutions with dilute hydrochloric acid while carrying out confirmatory tests for tetraoxosulfate 6 ions. Let me take that again. Why is it required to acidify sample solutions with dilute hydrochloric acid while carrying out confirmatory tests for tetraoxosulfate 6 ions? The answer is this. In order to remove interfering ions present in the sample, the interfering ions present in such a sample are two. It could be trioxocarbonate 4 ions or trioxosulfate 4 ions. The dilute HCl will remove these interfering ions so that your test sample will be free to be tested for tetraoxosulfate 6 ions. Now, the last question for this segment List five gases that must not be prepared in the open laboratory. Five gases that must not be prepared in the open laboratory. One, chlorine gas. Two, carbon two oxide gas. That's also called carbon monoxide. Three, hydrogen sulfide gas. Four, hydrogen chloride gas. And five, nitrogen four oxide gas. This is because all these gases are either poisonous or they have very, very bad and offensive odor. Thank you. 
Welcome back. Let's take the first question for this segment. State one air pollutant that causes the following blood poisoning, acid rain, and blackening of walls or buildings. For the first one, blood poisoning. This can be caused by two gases, carbon two oxide, also called carbon monoxide, but please don't write carbon monoxide in chemistry. The IUPAC name is carbon two oxide. And then the second one, carbon four oxide. That is also generally called by the layman, carbon dioxide. Now for acid rain, the following gases causes acid rain. Sulfur four oxide, that is your SO2 gas. Carbon four oxide, that's your CO2 gas and hydrogen sulfide gas, that is H2S. And for the blackening of walls, only one substance causes that, that is soot, that's powdered carbon. When you burn a substance, that black powder that you get is what causes blackening of walls. Question two, express the phenomenon illustrated by A, spreading of the smell of hydrogen sulfide or any gas with a perceivable odor in the laboratory or in an environment? The answer to that is diffusion. B, existence of atoms of the same element having different mass numbers. The phenomenon for that is isotopy. And C, movement of particles through a semi-permeable membrane from a region of high concentration to that of lower concentration until an equilibrium is established. The phenomenon for that is osmosis. And D, irregular or random movement of smoke particles in air. Again, the phenomenon for that is what we call Brownian movements in chemistry. The next question, state three reasons why air is considered to be a mixture. Let me take that again. State three reasons why air is considered to be a mixture. The answers are as follows. Number one, the components of air can be easily separated. Number two, each component of air still retain its individual properties in spite of the fact that they have been mixed together. Number three, air cannot be represented by a single chemical formula. And number four, there is no heat change when components of air are mixed under ordinary conditions. The next question, suggest a means of storage for A, a salt which fumes in air. That salt can be stored in a desiccator inside which a drying agent has been placed. Examples of drying agent that can be used in the desiccator are calcium oxide and calcium chloride. B, a compound which readily decomposes when exposed to light. That kind of a substance should be stored in an ambered colored bottle. And C, a flammable gas. Such a gas should be stored in what we call a pressurized gas cylinder. In fact, that is essentially what you have in the cooking gas that is being used at home or used to perform experiments in the laboratory. They are all flammable gases and so they have been stored in pressurized gas cylinders. And D, a metal which reacts explosively with water. Such a metal should be stored under liquid paraffin. Remember, in all this series of lessons for today, we have been treating questions or sample questions at WIEC or NECO exams that could be administered in question three of your practical exam. I did say at the beginning that question three is essentially test of your knowledge of general chemistry. I wish you the very best and I pray that you will remember all these things if you possibly come in contact with them in your exam. God bless you.